Hey everyone, I'm Sean Salmon, Vice President of MCLE and Professional Development here at Quimby. Um, today I'll be joined by cybersecurity expert and attorney, Scott Arnault. Scott is honestly a fabulous human being and a wealth of knowledge when it comes to data protection. And during the next hour, I'll be asking Scott to talk to us about the basics of cybersecurity for law firms, including understanding the electronic threats that face firms today and how to be ready for a security incident. So Scott, welcome. Um, I know we have like so much to get through, uh, but before we jump in, is there anything else you wanna add? Uh, just thank you very much and hello. Uh... Yeah, lots of info, so I'll just zip it and ask questions. I'm happy to answer. <laughs> Perfect. So um, jumping right in, are law firms at any greater risk than other organizations for a security breach? I'd love to say no, but unfortunately, the answer is yes. And part of your problem really that you run into there is the fact that we're dealing with clients. And a lot of those times, it's not just a matter of targeting the law firm itself. It can also be targeting the client. And often what will happen is you'll have a client who has, say, a more secure system and the attackers looking at their system trying to find in and says hey wait a second they've got attorneys <laughs> and then they go after the attorney network which is not as well defended or there's the fact that you have multiple clients and they're all going to hit you at once basically in short order they tend to uh, hackers that is tend to view attorneys as a soft target holding valuable data it's a really lousy combination but yeah it does mean that law firms tend to get targeted inordinately unfortunately Got it. And so, I mean, where, when you're helping firms, right? Mm -hmm. Or if you are a firm, like, where do you start? I mean, I'm sure it's, you know, good to understand a few tech basics, but like, walk us through how you start this. Well, usually, I mean, it depends on what sort of, you know, where they need me. It's like, has something just happened? Are we reacting to that? If I'm walking people through understanding this stuff, I do start off with the basics. I mean, um, as simple as what is binary data? Now, binary code is what's uh, referred to as basically the most basic sense of data. That's ones and zeros. We've all seen this, but what is it? Uh, in effect, it's how this stuff is stored. It's a uh, positive or negative, like on or off, or if it's mag magnetically polarized, positive or negative. And the whole idea there is using those units, that's how everything breaks down. I mean, this recording we're watching, it breaks down to binary code. Every program you use, anything you store, anything, binary code. And these ones and zeros are kind of it's not a lot there. The smallest amount you'd get out of them would be eight of them together. That's called a bit. And the thing is, they start adding up pretty quickly. Uh, you get about a thousand of those becomes a kilobyte. Or sorry, eight of them together is a byte. Sorry about that. Each individual one's a bit. About a um, thousand of those is a kilobyte, a thousand of those is a megabyte, a thousand of those is a gigabyte, then a terabyte. Now, how much is that realistically? Well, um, the conservative estimate, I mean, obviously, this will vary depending on what sort of information you have there. Uh, would it be something like a 4K movie? Obviously, that's going to take up a lot more room than the same movie in standard definition, something like that. But sort of a conservative estimate, let's say you're talking about just text. Um, one gigabyte is about 75,000 pages of text. So, for example, I have here a handy stick drive. This little guy can hold about... 19 million pages of text, just this. And if you're talking about a typical drive on a computer, terabyte, two terabytes, that's 75, 150 million pages of data. So if someone gets access and has that kind of storage capacity, they can take an awful lot from your network. And of course, moving beyond that, then it becomes, well, how does this all work with the networks? You hear those numbers like gigabytes and terabytes, and they're talking about storage or, or memory on a computer. Well, what are those? Storage is where you're actually holding on to things that are still there when you turn it off, sort of like a filing cabinet. Memory is what's actually up and running. That's how you can run what's happening on the computer instantaneously. I like to think of it as a desk you're working on, and at the end of the day, anything left in the desk disappears. So if, if you save it and put it into storage and it winds up in a filing cabinet, still there in the morning, you can call it back up. Now, storage comes in a few different flavors. Uh, typically, it's magnetic, optical, or what's called flash or SSD, including that little stick drive I was just holding up. Magnetic basically is magnetic polarization, positive or negative for the ones or zeros. Optical is small depressions on a little disc that get read with a laser. Think of like a CD or DVD. Magnetic drives are like older computer drives. They look like a stack of silvery pancakes, a little spindle reading them kind of. And um, flash or SSD, modern drives have those. They don't have moving parts, but the same thing. You're still storing ones and zeros. Stick drives will have that. They tend to be good. They have other issues. Like one of the funky things with those is if you store something eight times, 
it will store in eight different places in the drive so it doesn't wear part of the drive out. Now, why, why would I mention this? Because let's say a forensics expert is trying to look at something later, that's an awful lot of versions for them to look at. And if you're trying to get rid of data, it makes it that much harder to hide it. 